Thank you. Hello, good afternoon, and uh, welcome. Welcome to the Pride Beach. Um, my name is Pedro Pina. I'm, I, I have a day job. The day job is to uh, uh, lead a team that handles the relationship of some of the largest uh, advertisers, global advertisers that are headquartered in EMEA. Now, that is the day job. I have another job, and the other job is to be the uh, executive sponsor for the LGBTQ community across EMEA, uh, which we affectionately call Gaglers. So I am a Gagler, and I'm very proud to be the executive sponsor of the work we do across EMEA for the community. It's the second year we are here today uh, celebrating Pride at the uh, our beach, uh, at Google Beach. Um, and before everyone jumps, and I know everyone wants to go and have some party, um, we have put some of our best minds sifting through the data of Google and YouTube and find nuggets of insights of what's happening to our community, to the audience of LGBT across the world. And we'd like to share with you what those insights are. We did that last year. Last year, we were focused on the roles of brands in shifting perceptions around the world. This year, we spend a lot of time understanding what are the moments that matter in the life of the LGBT community and what do the Google trends through search and YouTube tell us about that. Now, what better place than can to where the best minds come and collide to think about the future of innovation and creativity? What's the best place to actually think about those insights and what are the consequences they have for us and for brands and, and the role of our industry at changing those same perceptions and helping brands be relevant at those moments? Now, I'm not going to do that, but I have put together an incredible panel to help me go through the, that data and um, comment on the findings um, that we have. So to help us out, we have an incredible distinguished panel, which I'd like to invite oops, to come and join me here um, on stage. Why don't you guys come over? Big round of applause for them, please. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves. So that you guys know a little bit about them. Resh, do you want to start? Um, sure. Hi, I'm Resh Thidu. I'm creative director specializing in VR and AR mixed reality at AKQA. And I'm based in New York, originally born and bred in London. Very good. Um, Hamish. Hamish, I'm uh, Chief Growth Officer for Wavemaker. Wavemaker, for anybody that doesn't know, it is the merged operation of MEC and, and Maxis. Uh, I'm Chief Growth Officer, basically new business guy, but also I champion diversity. So um, the first thing I did to champion diversity was to out myself on the board. So uh, I think you've got to lead by example, and that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Very good. Jerry. Uh, and I'm Jerry. I lead uh, media partnerships globally at Diageo. Uh, if you don't know us, you maybe know some of our brands, Smirnoff, Tanqueray, Guinness, uh, the sponsor of, of many a good night. And I guess for me, it's a, it's a really powerful story. When I was uh, at uni, actually, I wasn't out at uni. Um, I wasn't, you know, confident myself at that time. But um, there happened to be a really, really, gay, uh, really, really good dance night at a gay club. And I always used to go there with my friends. And that was when I first found like, other people who were like me and other people where I could be myself and be more expressive. And Smirnoff used to sponsor that. So right from mm -hmm. the beginning, I think Smirnoff's been a, a part of my journey. I'm really <laughs> proud to work for them now. <laughs> Excellent. Very good. Um, so as I said, we've put together some of our best minds going through uh, the, the data um, that Google and YouTube could tell us about. Um, uh, the LGBT community and how that audience is feeling today. And here's what we found out. We put together a video for that. Thank you. Very cool. Um, to ground our conversation, just some basic facts that came out of the piece of research. First, number one, first grounding fact, there are three really impactful, important emotional moments in the um, journey of the LGBT uh, community throughout an entire year when we looked at searches, both on Google and YouTube. There's an area around discovery and awareness. Find out who you are, define who you are. There's a second one around coming out and you know, finding the tricks and the help and the courage. Reach out to the community to find out how to make that big, big step. And the third one is to actually find identity and community. Reach out to other people, create connections. Um, we then found out um, that in the heat of the moment, uh, it's the moment when finding the community is the moment for identity and brands do make an effort, a significant effort on that stage. Um, and they also tend to sometimes design, coordinate their brand efforts to be present at the right moment, at the right time when the community needs the most from an identity standpoint. Importantly, 
coming out is not a obsession for those who are going through a journey. It's a very personal, specific journey, but there are other interests that people do when they are going through, they're asking YouTube for help on coming out. They're also searching for other things around it. So it's not as if it's the only thing that is happening in their lives. And this is important for us to get a better understanding and texture of what uh, it means to come out for, the, for this group. Um, this is potentially one of the most interesting ones. There are more searches and more interest around coming out, coming from countries where it's riskier to do so. And if there's any proof that uh, the internet is here to help those who are not favored by uh, specific legislation or cultural biases, this is one of them, the role that all of us play in this context. Uh, very good. And finally, coming out is a very personal journey, but when we decide to do that, these are the areas that we explore. It's a very rich, deep, uh, multifaceted area around finding a community, finding advice, defining or redefining what family means, prepare for that big, big moment, seek inspiration, and finally, get some coverage, some uh, courage. All right, so these were some of the findings that are gonna be at the base of our conversation today, and I'm gonna start with you, Rush. Um, Rest just spent the entire week judging. I don't know if some of you know what that means, but you're basically closed in a, in a room, spending a lot of time going through a lot of creative work. Uh, but so you've seen what some of the best minds around the world have done throughout this week. Has anything changed? Have you seen, going through the work, has anything changed since last year to this year? Um, it was really interesting. The short answer is yes, things have changed. Have they changed enough? No. Um, but. We spent five days judging a tremendous amount of work and we were judging the digital craft category across all facets. What I found really interesting is um, brands and creatives and content makers are using new mediums to tell stories in a different way. Yep. Um, and that's becoming really interesting. So you're seeing a lot of use of VR and mixed reality and AR to maybe talk about the same conversation but talk about it in a different way. Now, we saw pieces coming out that's talking about pride. We saw pieces coming out that are talking about the conversation that's happening in culture right now. Mm. The thing for me is, it's not a one-day conversation, and brands really need to understand that they should always be on. They should always be talking about it. They shouldn't talk about it for one day just for pride, feel like they've ticked a box, and then go away. And that's the importance about helping brands get to that point where they're tapping into culture mm. and what's happening in the world right now, and that resonates in the work that they do and the way they talk to their brands. But if it's not showing up all that frequently, does the diversity of the teams that you work with, does the, the representation of your teams have an impact on that? Do you, do you think that's important? I think that's potentially a reason why it's not showing up. Mm. Are our teams diverse enough? Are there, no, exactly, a few people are like, of course they're not. I am, I'll give you an example. I recently, you know, I'm at AKQA New York, which is great. We are a global digital agency. And there was a moment when I, uh, just a moment when somebody said, oh, you know, Rash, you're a woman. <laughs> I was like, great, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for pointing that out. Yes, I am, never really noticed. Um, and you're a mom. And I went, uh, yeah, also yes. And you have two kids. And you work at AKQA. And I was like, yes, we do. And suddenly I realized I'm actually the only creative director at AKQA in a leadership position. How does that happen? It's 2018. Mm. So representation is important representation, on, the crea on the creation side? Representation on any side is important. Until is we have a, a w within any business, especially the creative industry, yeah. until we have a representation of what this audience is here now, the work will not change because the stories are being told by the same people. So the work is not changing because the teams are not producing, because they, are, they themselves don't, are not representative. What about the teams that buy? So you represent on the other side. Is yeah. it important to have teams that buy that are representative? I mean, do we have it sorted? Absolutely not. Same challenges, but yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a huge part. It's a huge part of what we try and do in our team. It's a huge part of what we do in our in our business. Yeah. You, know, you don't you don't get diverse output without diverse input. Uh, and I think we've you know we've seen a really clear business. You know, diversity isn't just a thing we should do because we're half decent people. It's a thing we should do to drive businesses, grow businesses. You get better results with more mm -hmm. diverse teams. I mean, we don't, we've, we've got, we have got a good record at Diageo. I mean, definitely we have a long way to go. You know, we have a 50-50 female board, female-male board. We have, you know, some really, really positive stories. We deliberately move people globally around our business because, you know, different international perspectives yep. from different backgrounds are really yep. transformational. I'm part of our, our LGBT rainbow network, and, yep. and they do pull in some of us guys into some of the creative work when they're working on more sen sensitive projects, and yep. especially some of our Smirnoff work. And I think we try and get those perspectives, but, you know, no, we're not. And that's not just because of hiring. It starts much earlier than that. It starts how you get the right people interested mm. in, in joining the industry yeah. in the first place, I think. Mm. So even if we fix 
some of the representation over there, even if we have the right clients buying the right product, when it comes to actually planning for it, some of them are just doing it in June. They tick a box, as you correctly said, and they go away. Hamish, what do you see on your side? Does that make sense? Is that the right thing to do? What, what are the brands doing this day? I, 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 I'm very um, frustrated by, well, first of all, any, any without, just pure exploitation for, for short-term sales, mm -hmm. which is particularly um, transparent and, and annoying if you are uh, you know, being targeted in a, such a crass way. So I suppose even the ones that do tick the box, that's in some ways is getting it out there and that's helpful. But the reality is it, it, it does feel like on a lot of um, uninformed brand managers that it's kind of, it's Valentine's Day, Father's Day, Mother's Day, oh no, it's pride, tick the box, do the job and then go on and do something else. And that just doesn't really wash with consumers. Um, we, you know, I would encourage them to, uh, if you're gonna do it, do it properly or don't bother, basically. Um, and, and it's always nice to actually do something first and then talk about it, or ideally still get your consumers to talk about it for you. Um, so my advice would really be is absolutely, just commit to it properly, make it long term, and, 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 and let others do the work for you. Okay. And Jerry, you here? So some <laughs> brands do a really good job just saying it. The others do something about it. You have a wide portfolio. Do you agree? Is that, is that the right agree, way to yeah, go? What's it's, your perspective? As a, as a personal consumer, I've noticed certainly last year, like right in London, London Pride, a lot of brands jumped mm. on it. You started to see a little bit of backlash to some extent. People saying, thanks for putting a rainbow on. What are you doing behind it? I, I still think it's a really powerful thing that you know, big brands are willing to you know, stand up and, and, and be aligned with our community. But yes, they absolutely should do more. Uh, like, yeah, our Smirnoff brand this year in, in the UK took the decision to spend much less money on telling people, you know, what they're doing in this space and, uh, and more on doing it. They, they pulled out some of their sponsorships. They, they started working more with the LGBT Foundation. Yeah. In particular, they, they sponsor these kind of night angels, uh, volunteer groups mm -hmm. who help people get home at the, yep. end of a, at the end of a night. If you're, you know, in, and, and in LGBT communities, you know, although we think of England as a, as a much safer place than many, there are still, a, there are still mm -hmm. risks, if you right. know. You can be quite a vulnerable person. Right. And I think that, and that is still getting us, you know, and that, and that is great for our business because that's getting us, you know, in front of people at a time when, you know, uh, we, we're out and about positively helping commu mm. uh, a community. It's, you know, it's not a charitable effort, but it's a, it's a really great use of saying, you know, it's, we have a purpose. They, they want to be the sponsor of inclusive good times. And by you, they're using their advertising budget to yep. make those times safer for people. Yep. Yeah. So this next one is for you, Rush. Um, some people say, you know, coming out is a very, very personal journey. Uh, your uh, identity, it's a personal thing. Leave me alone. Brands should just stay away from it. What, why are you bothering? Why are you messing up with my life? And why do you, why, why do you raise this point? Why, why is it relevant? What, what would you say it's, to that? It's, so, it's more relevant now than it's ever been because we've been told the same stories for hundreds of years. Hmm. Women have been told the same stories. The lesbian gay community has been told the same stories. And if those stories don't change, then nothing in society, nothing in our work is going to change. Mm. And brands have a social and a moral responsibility to do that. Uh -huh. If you want to succeed as a brand today, stop selling your products. Tell us what your purpose is and mm -hmm. maybe we'll buy your product. Mm. And that's a paradigm shift because brands no longer have the power. The moment we had the power of social media, the moment we have the power of the internet, you have the power of knowledge and now you have the power of your own voice. Got it. And for brands, that means, well, how do they navigate that space? And that becomes scary. Mm. So, it's, so it's important that they are talking about it. And we should celebrate brands that are being brave enough to do that. Mm. Celebrate them. But what we need to be doing as a creative agency is helping them understand this. Once you start talking about it, yeah. this is the mom in me going, roll your sleeves up. Now what do we do? Let's see some action. Stop talking. This is great. Keep talking. But let's also see some positive action within brands, within agencies. Too. But, but I want to say something about specifically, specifically on the coming out bit, yeah. I actually think brands should leave that well alone. Okay. It's, a, it's an incredibly personal, emotional roller coaster. I mean, I think credit, I grew up in the middle of nowhere in, in, in the English countryside, very charming place to live, but you know, it can be a very lonely place. And there was absolutely no information available. I didn't know anybody similar to you until you walked in a bar. So, you know, it's great now the kids have got so much access to information and, and, and credit to, to, to your platforms to basically make sure it's yep. all available for everybody. Mm. So that's a huge step forward. Uh, so I, I think actually brands should leave that bit alone. Mm. And, and it's great there's communities online that are vibrant on that and, and maybe supporting those communities in, in, more, in more subtle ways, but certainly not in crass branding ways. 
I think the, the brand's duties are there to make it as, as normal and reflect society yeah. as, as much as possible. Uh, okay. and, and good brands can do that very well. Having said that, as Rash said, it requires courage. It requires courage from the marketing departments. It requires courage from those who are making those decisions. You want to tell us a little bit about what, <laughs> what does it take to have courage? Hamish, you may not have fully taken your advice. So we've, uh, we, have, we have a couple of times played in that coming out space. And I, I absolutely agree. You know, people's individual coming out stories are incredibly personal. I, I know. I think a, band, a, a brand trying to head go into that could be really risky. We have done a couple of times where we've, uh, out in Ireland, when they had the referendum, we did some really powerful coming out stories. And in particular, a lot of what we've done as, as a business has been with Smirnoff. Smirnoff is almost an easy fit. For us, we also really wanted to do something with Guinness. Guinness is, you know, to do with yeah. rugby, made of more. It's a much more, it's a much harder space. You have to be much braver to do there. Um, and we've worked with Gareth Thomas for, for quite a long time, who is a, a rugby player uh, in the UK who, who came out as gay. And, and, and we did help him tell his, his coming out story. And, and that, that was our, for all people, our, our World yeah. Cup advert. And that was a much, much bolder step for us to take because you can imagine a lot of traditional Guinness consumers probably slightly less, uh, well, not open-minded, but you know, it's, it's not as natural an environment for that message to land. I don't know, do we have it? Or yeah, we have it, let's take a look. <laughs> so yeah, I, 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 I accept the point, I accept the point, it's, it's a risky territory to play in, but I think for, for him, he really wanted to tell that story and we were proud to be part of that, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so back to the storytelling. Um, apparently, there's more stories than just the, the obvious story that we would expect from an athlete like this. So it looks like, with access of information, consumers are finding out that actually real stories are very different from the stories that have been told forever and ever by brands before. Apparently, they're telling only one side of the story. So time to change that, Rash? Yeah, and I, and I think actually you captured it. So. We, w we had a, a great breakfast in the morning and we were just talking about all of it and the conversation was flowing and, and you kind of encompassed it really well because we've only been told part of the stories. The story of a, a husband and a wife and 2.4 children is a story that we see in every movie. The story of the woman, you know, being heartbroken because her boyfriend's broken up with her or she's always playing the distressed one and she's not the superhero. Why? I mean, why? Those are the stories that we see. Those are the stories our children grow up with and those are the stories they begin to believe. And as you said, that story, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's incomplete. Mm. There are other stories to tell and we need to normalize those stories. I agree with Hamish. It's, it's not a big thing. We're all human and we're all normal. I love these guys earlier on at breakfast. They said, oh, Resh, you're the normal one. I went, what? <laughs> huh? I'm not. I'm just, yeah, maybe I am. You're not. <laughs> um, and like, that's the thing. For me, it's really important that we bring, we, for this generation here and the generations to come and my kids to come, that they, they're not afraid to talk about these topics. Yep. And when it comes for the time as a parent, how do you tell them mm. the stories? Yep. How do we change that? And until we change that, it's, it's not, nothing's going to change. And brands have the power to do that because they're pushing their message out there. So their challenge is harder. Okay. So what's their purpose? What's their story? And, and that's a great piece yeah. and that works. But then you look on the other side and it's like, but do they have the right to tell that? Mm. Well, I think, yeah, they, they definitely have the right to tell, uh, to sort of showcase those stories. I meant actually getting involved in the personal journey yeah. of the individual. So it's, it's yeah. a different thing. But I think going back to your point about brands and normalization, there's some really fantastic examples of brands. I mean, I, I personally, I think IKEA is, is a, a, a credit because they just, they don't make a big deal out of it. They, they basically put two guys chilling on a sofa and a Russian poster. And it's just, you know, to, and, and in the streets of Moscow. That kind of stuff, when, when, when countries like Russia are going backwards very quickly, is really, really important. And they play a, a great role there. Um, you know, they, they do TV ads with families coming home. And uh, funny enough, there's two girls who happen to be going out together. It's just that normalization, I think, is a really very good thing to do. And hats off to, to brands like Unilever and Elena Santos, who she was here last year. I mean, this lady is a pioneer in terms of being brave and moving forward. Mm. Um, you know, when you take risks, not everybody's going to like it. Mm. Um, a lot of people are really going to hate it. You, um, she, she was sort of talking about the, the, the brand trolls, the, very, the disgusted and horrified people are very quick to come up and, uh, and jump and shout about what's wrong with it. But the nice thing now is, is consumers are kind of fighting back. And I think there, there, there's a new term called uh, internet pixies who basically come and repair the damage on behalf of the brands. It's, we haven't got to go and issue some publicity statements and, and, and uh, reputation management because consumers do it for themselves. I mean, it's, it's, it's great to see. Exactly. 
Great. We are almost wrapping up. One final word from, I know, it's very quick, but one final word from each one of, on, of you. What needs to change in order for, for us to be discussing something else next year, year at the beach? Well, what needs to change? I think some of it's just about being really conscious about it. So something I'm um, stereotype alliance where you may whether you're doing a deliberate bit of a bit of copy or it's just in in how you're including LGBT people more and, and other people. Let's let's at least have thought about it and sense checked it. You know, yeah, be conscious about it. Lean in. Change the story and brave Change clients. Story. Brave cl find brave clients. Represent a society and do it in a genuine, long-term way. Don't just tick boxes. Excellent. It's time to finish. I have two public announcements at the end, but before that. These guys spent their time, they dedicated some time to be here to the, uh, with us today, walking through their uh, perspective on the insights we found out from our report. I'm eternally grateful for the fact that you spent time with us today. Big round of applause to thank them for your time. Thank you. All right. And one final couple of things. Num uh, the most important one, we are excited to announce that today we are supporting Pride AM. Uh, to launch their Pride brand makeover 2018, a competition that poses a single challenge to brands and agencies, which is to reimagine a campaign for the LGBTQ plus audience. The competition is designed to highlight the debate around diversity and inclusion in advertising. Now, this successful competition was launched in the UK last year, will be rolled out globally this year, supported by YouTube. More details are going to be announced by Pride AM today, but I can't stress how pleased we are to provide this support and to drive inclusive advertising around the world. They are representatives around, uh, of Pride AM. Can you guys just, there they are, look, hello, look at them. Thank you, guys. Um, so, um, and uh, they're wearing the Pride AM pins, and if you have any questions, go reach out and ask everything you do. I want to thank everyone for spending time with us today, this afternoon. I want to thank my team for doing the job. Craig, thank you wherever you are. The marketing team, there you are. All of this was possible because a group of people put some time on the side, apart from their day-to-day -day job, to actually uh, prepare this session of today. So I cannot be more thankful to you guys. Um, stick around. Uh, around 3 p.m., we have the YouTube review panel. Uh, look back at the pr work that was produced throughout the year and how it's helping us advance the cause of the LGBTQ. Uh, community. The beach will be open until late evening. Grab a drink, have some, uh, have some food, and have some fun, and be proud because we are. Thank you so much. <laughs>